Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our third part of Bob and I's series. Uh, for those of you who missed the first two, um, the first one I gave kind of my story of what um, I received the message of masculinity was. Bob then gave his um, side of the story. Um, and now we're just going to kind of talk about, you know, what the solutions are, you know, what you know, what can you do now that you, you know, have this knowledge or have reflected on your life? So, yeah. yeah and before we do that, I, I think we should talk about how hard it is. To be honest, this isn't easy. Uh, and again, since I'm 40 years older than you, I'm I'm really interested in your experience about what it was like to to recognize that all these images about what or these messages about what it means to be a man were not only dangerous for girls and women, but were not serving your emotional, physical, mental health very well as as well. Uh, so when you first started to understand this, what changed in your life for better or worse? And, and how did you cope with it? Yeah, so like you said, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I think we both don't wanna hide how, you know, difficult this is. And, um, you know, this isn't, you know, us trying to get, people that come you know necessarily on this side it's it's more of you know what like people wanting better for their lives people wanting better for the world mm -hmm. right which is why we don't want to hide you know how difficult this is um but you know when i first came to all of these awakenings mm -hmm. um i lost a lot of my friends um mm -hmm. and you know i felt completely isolated um you know there's there was a point in my life where Jennifer was basically my only ally um, and, you know, still is basically with the exception of you and, you know, a few other people. Um, but yeah, that was extremely difficult because masculinity, you know, bred this or, you know, instilled this thing in me that, you know, I need to have people around me, especially, you know, like we talked about um, previously, you know, girls and stuff. Um so where that led me is not even knowing who I was. So when everyone left me, I had to figure out, you know, who Anthony mm -hmm. Esser was. And that was extremely difficult, um, you know, to the point where I, you know, I, I have no shame in, in admitting this. You know, I mean, I, I was so down and so lost and so just in fear because my whole life basically was a lie that I you know, told Jennifer, I'm like, I feel like I need to check myself into a mental institution. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, the coping with all of that, with having every one of your past leave you, I mean, my family's left me, um, as well. Um, what I did to cope with that is just, again, continue to reach out to Jennifer. I mean, she was a huge part in helping me throughout all of this. Um, you know, seeking out other resources like yourself, I, I've, mm -hmm. you know, told you and um, other people just, you know, how much of a resource you were because of how open and honest you were about your story, which just, it didn't make me feel so alone, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I, and I think the other thing too, that really helped me is finally realizing that I need help. Yeah. Because masculinity says that we don't need help. You know, men are the ones that are supposed to be in charge and um, have everything together and have everything under control. And when I finally just realized, you know, that I, I didn't and I needed help, I sought it out. Mm -hmm. um, and even just doing things for myself um, that didn't lead to shame or guilt, you know, mm -hmm. because previously my so much of my activities were you know, bringing me shame and guilt, you know, um, hanging out with poor friends that made poor decisions, you know, sleeping around pornography and all that, you know, so there's all this shame and guilt. And that was another tough thing was figuring out what I actually enjoyed in life. Mm -hmm. Because when I removed all of that stuff, I was like, you know, I would sit there and be like, I don't even know what to do right now. Because I don't know what what I enjoy. I don't know what my um, desires, my aspirations, my, you know, what I, what just brings me joy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking, I, 
I started the process that you're engaged in in my 30s, or as you did mm-hmm. it in your 20s. Uh, and my 20s were a train wreck that whole decade. Um, I didn't understand why I was so unhappy. And of course, it wasn't just about these, you know, uh, unhealthy views of masculinity. You know, we're all individuals. We all have our own psychological struggles and family problems. But uh, if I could have found my way to the the kind of realizations we're talking about when I was your age, I would have saved myself a whole lot of depression <laughs> and mm-hmm. uh, and really rough times. I, I know I'm I'm I don't want to be glib. It was it was pretty rough. By the time I hit 30, went back to school, met these folks who exposed me to a feminist critique. I I was hungry for a different way to live. Uh, mm. and less tied to the old, the old me. Uh, I already was aware I had to change or I wasn't going to make it. Uh, and so I was lucky. This was also the 19, late 1980s when uh, cultural conversations about this were easier, I think. Um, a lot of the space that I was able to, to move into to talk about this with other men, there were men's groups, there were pro-feminist men's groups yeah. all over the place, you know, and those have largely uh, gone away. And so in some ways it was easier for me. Uh, But again, you know, it was really one or two people who pulled me through, people I could Mm -hmm. trust. And like you, I had to let go of a lot of things. I let go of a lot of friends. Uh, My best friend from college, uh, we couldn't couldn't make our way through it. Uh, I was in a relationship that, that was sort of premised on me being a normal guy. And when I said, I just can't be a normal guy anymore. And normal is obviously in quotes here. Yeah. Uh, that that relationship didn't last. Um, so there was a lot of struggle, a lot of pain, a lot of loss. Um, you know, but I've always said that no matter how hard it was, I wouldn't go back to the person I was. I wouldn't go back to that person who was trying yeah. to be normal. Yeah. Because that was, you know, I think you used um, the term kind of deadening. Uh, and at, at some point, if you've lived with that deadening for too long, it's really hard to come back. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, I'm i kind of envious of young men today who are thinking about these things, you know, when they're teenagers or when they're in their 20s, because it took me so long. But um, same at, at the same time, the struggle never really ends. I don't know about you, but uh, I feel like you don't get to a place where, oh, you're now a new man with new ideas right. and because the culture is still constantly telling you you know to be different so do you still do you feel like um you still have to struggle every day to to stay clear i mean it's it's a i mean so i i, I was thinking as i was listening to you i'm like i didn't really talk about like the upswing of all this yeah. so it was kind of part of a downer with all yeah. this but um, but yeah, no, there, I mean, when you get past that, I mean, yes, there's, uh, there's always struggles. I mean, there's with technology mm-hmm. and, and, you know, advertising, like there's all everywhere you look, there's messaging. Yeah. Right. Um, so sorry about that. Uh, so gosh, darn. no, it's working. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, so, um, it's a, it's a constant struggle. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's, you know, I go through these down times where, you know, it's, it's gloomy, it's, it's sad, but then, you know, you work through that and you gain more confidence and you gain more self-love and peace and joy within yourself. Because again, like, I mean, self-growth isn't, it's not this stagnant line. And I mean, that's, I think, you know, cliche thing to say, but it's very true. And I've, you know, personally experienced that. Um, and, you know, I think too, the other thing that I, uh, you know, want to talk about, um, that you said is that there was a lot of support in your time and now there's, you know, there's, there's nothing really. And we've seen that, you know, even within our program of, you know, these kids and, you know, these people that have been with us for so long, Mm -hmm. we, we teach them about this stuff. And it's, you know, such a wave of like, oh my gosh, it's like an oh crap moment. Yeah. And they they don't, other than us, there's no support. 
Yeah. Right. And if they're only seeing us twice a week, I mean, I can see why a lot of them, yeah. you know, have left and don't want to embark on this. Yeah. Um, you, you know, that that maybe is a, a good place to to end to remind. We've talked about our individual experiences, uh, but this has to be collective. Nobody can do it on their own. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've talked about pornography and and quitting pornography is very hard. Uh, once you get a feminist analysis and you realize the destructive nature of pornography for women and girls as well as men and boys, it's not like automatically it it becomes easy to stop. And I've talked to so many men who say, I know it's dangerous. I know it's destructive. I don't want to use this anymore, but I keep being pulled back into it. And And I've always said the same thing, which is I don't know that there's one way to quit your use of pornography, but I do know that if you try and do it by yourself, you'll probably fail. Yeah, it, it's so hard without support. So, you know, I had this one friend when I first started doing this. You've talked about how connecting with me has been helpful. If you just have one person to start, that can make all the difference in the world and and open up to them and be accountable. And and then I think the real the real challenge is how to expand it to get groups of men talking about this, which is why I'm so excited to 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 know about and be part of your program with Jennifer that you're reaching um, younger boys and giving them a place so that's to me that's hopeful yeah no I mean, I mean as always i mean we we constantly say we're just so appreciative to have you as well um and you know i mean just really quick before we wrap up i mean i know this isn't i mean jennifer where and i were kind of in this you know delusion that you know that if it works for one person, it's going to work for the next person. But this is, you know, it's not black and white with all this stuff. You know, what yeah. works for someone may may not work for the other person. But, you know, just speaking from my own personal experience of what, you know, and it got me off of pornography mm -hmm. was, you know, educating myself about what is actually going on in pornography, how these girls, you know, are being treated. And, mm -hmm. you know, even just getting in touch with what it did to me and seeing how it affected yeah. me, you know, yeah. I mean, that, that is ultimately what, you know, helped me yeah. out. And once we have that knowledge, we have to hold each other accountable. Yes. Uh, but at the same time, I think what I've learned is we all fail. It's very hard um, to just turn your life around. So how to balance that accountability and a, a kind of, compassion for yourself when you fail. I mean, mm. you know, it's never a, an easy road. So uh, I guess that's what I take away from now 35 years of, you know, dealing with these issues and doing research and writing is uh, it's got to be collective. You have to have support. You have to be rigorous and and even sometimes rough on yourself when it's easy to yeah. take the, the the old way out. But then you have to, you know, practice that compassion for yourself and your friends as well. So, well, and that's and that's why it's so important. I 100 percent agree to just be in environments that are awakening to like awakening you to how harmful this stuff is, because if you're in other environments where, you know, if you're in a fraternity house or, you know, on a hockey team, that's you know everyone's saying that it's completely normal. I mean, it's just. You're gonna follow, so that's yeah. why you, you are yeah. serious about changing your life yeah. around and getting off of all this stuff. You have yeah. to find these like-minded people yeah. that are accountable and and show you support. Yeah, and that's the the kind of message I think is there are people out there. Um, there are boys and men trying to do it differently. We just have to be, I think, courageous enough to tell each other that we're we're fed up with the way we were trained to be men, we don't want to do it anymore. And we're willing to be vulnerable with each other. Um, and I certainly have appreciated that in our interaction. Uh, it's been really rewarding for me. So thank you, Anthony. I'm really grateful. I, and I am so grateful for you, Robert. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.